you know, what can we learn from that to help the next guy? I would say be a good friend or be a good loved one. And real love is going to address a situation. Fake love will act like everything's fine. Yeah. Real love confronts and says, hey, let's talk about this. So today we're going to answer these questions. So we're going to go back and forth and uh, we'll just bounce them off each other and we'll see which ones we want to answer. So number one, what are some common misconceptions about seeking help for mental health issues? Mm. That's a good one. What do you think, Sam? Um, I think a lot of common misconceptions would probably be, I can never get better, mm. right? Or how's anybody else going to help me? Nobody understands yeah. what I'm going through. It's kind of the onion effect. You just start mm -hmm. pulling away layers and just giving yourself excuse after excuse after excuse. Yeah. Why you shouldn't. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I think also, too, um, about misconceptions about seeking help is no one else struggles like me or if i ask for help people are gonna see how messed up i really am but everybody's kind of messed up <laughs> yeah i mean a, a, a huge one is if i share too much am i gonna hurt the people around me mm -hmm. right because yeah. how many people are dealing with mental health issues that have to do with their family somebody close trauma yeah right and they don't want to expose those people whether it be yeah. fear or you know just not wanting to do that and mess up the family dynamic mm -hmm. which is yeah. a huge one that's big um so yes yeah, that's that's the answer for that you know seeking help is always a good thing mm -hmm. and sometimes when you ask for help you unlock the people around you to get vulnerable and they and maybe they were struggling and now they, they could open up too because you gave them permission yeah because you you took that first leap of faith right and you're the one that's going to step out and be like okay i'm going to try to do this and then somebody sees that strength and then that decision making they are like okay well if they can do it then i can do it mm -hmm. and then that just starts the domino effect yeah right so it can go from kid to sibling to cousin to mom to yeah. dad and yeah. then next thing you know the whole family's in therapy and everybody's dealing with what they needed to deal with yeah it's beautiful it's awesome Number two, how can someone recognize when it's time to seek professional help for their mental health struggles? I'll, I'll start off with that one. I think a big way people could recognize it is when your mental health struggles start to take you away from your normal daily activities. Mm -hmm. So you go, you're going to work late or you're missing work because you just don't have no motivation or you don't really want to hang out with your family like you used to because you feel isolated or you feel like they don't understand you. It's starting to affect your daily routine. It's starting to affect your goals and, and the things you want to accomplish. So then at that point, that's a that's a determining factor where you could say, you know what, I think I need help. I, I think I, what I'm currently doing isn't working yeah. and I've already tried to get better on my own and that's not working. And you almost do like a self-assessment like, OK, I told myself I was going to do better. Yeah. And now I'm not. I told myself this year I wanted to connect with my family on a better level, and that ain't happening. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do better at work, and I just got let go because I keep missing. And so all those things are leading to the destination of you reaching out for help. Yeah. So just to bounce off of that, it's the it's the mindset, right? So you go from I'm waking up at 6 in the morning, I'm having breakfast at 6.30, mm -hmm. I'm out the door by 7.00 whether you're going to the gym or you're going to work, whatever it may be. But then you have that severe shift mm -hmm. right? where now you're sleeping until eight. Mm -hmm. your diet's gone out the window. Yeah. You're isolating. You're not being social. Yeah. You know, you're shutting yourself down. People call you like, hey, man, come and hang out. And you're like, nah, I'm good. When you used to be yeah. what some people will call a social butterfly. Yeah. Right. And you'd be outside. Hey, we outside. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just, hey, I'm not, I'm not feeling it, you know? And also I think one of the biggest ones is, recognizing how you look at yourself right mm -hmm. so people who come and they get dressed up and you know women who do their makeup guys who do take care of self-care mm -hmm. and all those start going out the window now you're walking out the door in sweats and a sweater you know what i mean or yeah. you're just chilling with some crocs on and some shorts and you're you, there's no motivation self-care self is huge it's big you know so if you're not showering every day and mm -hmm. you're just like oh, i'm just whatever bro yeah i don't care you know yeah. then that's something where you said you, you hit a valid point where it's you have to do a self-assessment and yeah. honestly take a look at yourself like okay yeah. what happened what you happened? know what, I mean? what happened that now i'm this way when i used to be this way yeah 
something yeah. happened mm-hmm. right so that's when you got to reach out and be like all right i need somebody to look from the outside looking in mm-hmm. right to be able to identify those things and just call yeah. them out that's good i like that what about this one can you explain the role of therapy in treating mental health disorders sheesh so okay, here we go go ahead hit me with that education <laughs> so from my understanding um so the explain the role of therapy in treating mental health disorders so to me when you're in, in you're in therapy right so this is what i tell everybody that i work with is going into therapy is not just building a relationship with somebody but also being vulnerable mm-hmm. right behind a door and you're able to talk to somebody and be like okay this is what what's what because something that you may think is so minute and so small yeah can be something that was a deciding factor in what's happening in your life currently yeah right so being able to utilize your therapist and what they went to school for and what they're educated in to be able to utilize that pulling from them but they're also pulling from you mm-hmm. but having that symbiotic relationship where you're symbiotic. basically yeah see my education Ooh. i read a lot of comic books so symbiotic like right dinner. they're feeding off of each other yeah right so when you find that therapist that's like all right i'm on your level and let's talk mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. and you're able to be open bro i've seen that i've seen people walk out of a therapist session just like they just had a freaking two-hour workout and they're just drained yeah because it's like you just let everything out yeah dude. and then yeah. the next day they're like all sunshine and rainbows yeah because they're starting to identify those things so therapy is huge yeah. in identifying that's good yeah Wow. Therapy. I love that. So what about this one? What are some barriers that people may face when trying to access mental health treatment and how can they overcome them? Um, I think a big barrier is people are just not educated Mm -hmm. on the different type of treatments that are available. Like some people might say, uh, you know, they might call us and say, I need therapy. And then we say, well, what do you need therapy for? And they say, well, I can't stop picking at my skin mm. or picking at my face. I can't stop harming myself. Mm. And then to that person, we would say, okay, you do need therapy, but there's other things you need. Mm. You need maybe some intensive outpatient mm. or you need partial hospitalization or some people might even need to take a couple of days and go into an inpatient facility first because... People, I think, are just not educated enough on what's available for mental health. So they they don't know what's available. And because they don't know what's available, they can't figure out what type of ways to access it. So that's a barrier. And then they just end up saying, well, you know what? Just forget it. I don't even. Yeah. I'll just deal with it because I've been dealing with it for the past 15 years. So it's just part of my life now. But I, I the reason why I like doing this is because we can let people know. That might have been part of your life for the past 20 years, but that doesn't have to be part of your next 20 years. Sex. And you might been, you might, maybe you've been used to being depressed and, and, and that's just how you are now, but you don't have to be like that no more. You can get better. Yeah. So, you know, when we're talking about barriers, you know, like you said, it's like somebody can call the phone line and be like, Hey, like I'm suffering from a, B and C, but it's not a big deal. I just want to see if there's options out there, mm-hmm. but having educated people on the other side of that line to be able to identify those things is huge. But on, I also believe that another barrier would be the people who are around these people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause you have people like, Oh, you're fine, dude. There's nothing yeah. wrong with you. Yeah. You're just going through something. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, you've been making it this far. What's wrong? Yeah. So people that are condoning that, yeah, which in reality they also need therapy because they're not identifying things either. Yeah. So they need help they're as well. It down. Yeah, they're pushing it they're down. Experts at hiding it. Exactly. So it's like when you start finding yourself around people who don't want to assist you in exposing mm-hmm. and dealing with those things to get you to a, ben- a better health status. Yeah. Then you really got to look at it, right? So that's a huge barrier for me. Yeah. It's like yeah. family and friends, right? Uh-huh. Which is like, bro you want everybody to be better yeah but yeah. sometimes people don't because they're dealing with their own thing so yeah. i'm gonna keep you in the mud with me bro because yep. if you leave yep. me i have nobody else yeah then i gotta look at me then i gotta look at me yeah. so that would be calling that same number that you're calling yeah exactly you get what i'm saying yeah. so for me that's a barrier yeah for sure i agree or you know like even that goes along with that is shame mm. especially for men mm. like for you to tell people that you're struggling a lot of people think that's basically you saying you're weak or you're not a man yeah but no a man is able to own up to his defects able to own up to his weaknesses his areas where he needs to work on 
And that's what a man really is. A man is not someone who acts like something, but really in reality behind the scenes, he's struggling or dealing with this. There's a time to hold it together. Yeah. You got to hold it together. You got to do what you got to do. But there's also a time where you have to realize you can't hold it together no more unless you get these areas fixed. Yeah. So it's like, like you're saying, you know, a real man is able to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. when they need to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing weak about saying, hey, I'm struggling right here, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If anything, that's the strength, right? Because you're saying, I need to get stronger here. Yeah. It's not that I'm weak here. It's Uh, like, hey, I'm not as strong as I should be. Yeah. So what can I do to make myself stronger in that area? That's right. But from the other standpoint is this, being able to be open to receive that, Mm -hmm. right? That that sometimes heavy criticism Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or that heavy correction. Yeah. Right, where it's like, nah, bro, that's not what we do. That's yeah. not what you should be doing, and these are the effects of it. Yeah. Now, how many people can go into therapy and get all this beautiful insight mm-hmm. and then just leave it on the couch or leave it on the chair? Yeah. And they walk out the door and they just show up for their next session. Yeah. Right? So it's like, don't just show up to your weekly session just because you're running a habit. Yeah. Go there, learn, take notes, mm-hmm. and be like, all right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to work on it. Yep. That's what men do, in my exactly. opinion. Right. Exactly. To be able to be vulnerable, but also be strong. Yeah. When you need to be. Yeah. You know, because there's nothing wrong with being that person that people can depend on. Yes. Especially your family, your wife, mm-hmm. your children. That's what a man is called to do. I'm the protector. I'm mm-hmm. the provider. I will do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. But it's also, I have these people around me that are going to help me support that and hold that wall. Yep. Yep. So. I like that. How, how can friends and family members support a loved one who is struggling with mental health issues. This one's crazy because we've been we've been getting a lot of people share their stories about loved ones who committed suicide, loved ones where they were they saw the signs that they weren't doing good, they saw the signs that they weren't happy, but they didn't get to them in time or they didn't they the signs were there but they weren't paying attention to the signs. And uh, even there's one with with the with the guy. He tur- he just turned thirty. He was blowing out his candles for his birthday, and his little girl was right there in the corner. She was smiling at him, but he had that blank stare on his face, and that one was sad, dude. That one, like, and a lot of people watched that video, and a lot of people said they could relate to him, and a lot of people said, how could he do that if he had his little girl right there, and all kinds of mixed emotions, but. You know, what can we learn from that to help the next guy? I would say be a good friend or be a good loved one. And real love is going to address a situation. Fake love will act like everything's fine. Yeah. Real love confronts and says, hey, let's talk about this. And if they don't want to talk about it, you know, what if that was your last opportunity to talk to him? What are you going to do? Just leave him alone? You have, there has to be a level of, uh, there has to be a level of love that's going to say, you know what? I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to make sure you're okay. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that. So how can you tell somebody you love them or consider yourself a loved one or a sibling mm-hmm. or a child of somebody or whatever it may be if you're not willing to make that person uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You call them out on it. Yeah. Hey, man, this isn't you. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And if they deny it and they don't want to talk about it, then maybe you're not the person to address it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean leave it on the table. Yeah. What that means is, all right, let's find another avenue to get yeah. there. Yeah. Right? Because how many people just say, all right, no, I'm fine. You know, I've seen a lot of videos where, where it says, if you ask a man if he's fine. Yeah. He's really not fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because society says this is what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But... If you truly say you love somebody and if you're truly there for somebody, then you got to call it out. Yeah. You have to know because me and you from the womb to the tomb. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, if I'm off because Mm -hmm. you've called it out before, like, are you good, dude? And I'm like, ah, no, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then we'll talk. Yeah. It's just being able to not have that fear of man. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not, I don't care what you think about me. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're going to get upset at me. I don't mm-hmm. care if you're not going to like me at the end of this conversation. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on. This is what I'm seeing. And this is what I have. So let's work this out. 
Mm-hmm. If you don't want to work it out with me, then let's go find somebody together that you're willing to yeah. do it with. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think that's probably the best way to be, honestly, because the more that you just push it, suppress it, let it go, mm-hmm. then, and I don't mean to make this funny or make light of this, but then that family member will probably be on a video later on because yeah. they've taken their own life, yeah. you know? And we can go down this rabbit hole of like people who are like, oh, how could he do that? Because he had a child. Yeah. From a dad's aspect, you don't know what that dude's going through. Yeah. You don't know where his mental health was. Yeah. You don't know what his mental state was. Yeah. His mindset is everybody's better off without me, including my yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. The question should be who checked on that man? That's right. Who checked on that? Who checked on that man? That's, that's the question. Crazy. That's crazy. That's heavy. So check on your friends, check on your loved ones, make sure they're good. Um, you could always. If you're ready to get treatment today, if you want help, you need help, maybe you're not even sure what kind of help you need or want, you could contact us. We'll help you figure it out. Um, We have a lot of options, so please reach out. You're not alone. And again, who checked on that, man? Mm -hmm. Make sure you're checking on your people. And if no one's checking on you, send us a message. Call us. And we can check on you and uh, because, you know, right now you need help, but there's going to be a day where if you get your help you need, you'll be able to help maybe 10 other people or 15 or 20 or 100. And if everybody does their part, we could do better. Yeah. Um, This last one, we'll talk about this last one. I like this one. What are some self-care practices that individuals can incorporate into their daily routine to support their mental health and well-being? Oh, well, you want me to take this one? Go ahead. All right. So self-care practices, yeah, that goes from anything from shaving your head every day, mm-hmm. showering every day, mm-hmm. making sure your laundry is clean, folding your stuff. Mm-hmm. My wife will probably watch this and laugh and hanging up your clothes and putting yeah. your shoes away. Yeah. Those are all away. self-care. Yeah. Right. You're honoring yourself because you're respecting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, surrounding yourself with people who are positive, mm-hmm. go to go to these meetings if you need them, mm-hmm. you know, reach out mm-hmm. for help. Yeah. Is all this is self-care, right? Really well, go play basketball. Go to the gym. If you have a faith, run it, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, because you isolating and you doing just, I got this on my own. Just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to help people. Mm-hmm. You know, not I can't just help you. Yeah. Not just me. It's got to be me and, and a group of other people. Yeah, army. It's an army, mm-hmm. right? Because the way that the world is today, self-care is thrown out the window. Yeah. I need to take care of everybody else before I take care of me. Mm-hmm. But you can't genuinely, and this is going to sound cliche, but you can't take care of anybody if you can't take care of yourself. That's good. Right? Because yeah. what's the point? You know what I mean? You can't pour from an empty cup, man. It's not real. It's not real. It's fake. You're putting on a mask. Yeah. I'm fine. Everything's good. What do you need? Yeah. Right? You go home and you're just isolating, watching mm-hmm. Netflix and chilling by yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So not pouring from an empty cup. So you got to fill yeah. that cup up with things before you even try to help anybody else. I like that. Here's what I like to do, self-care. How do I start my day? How do I end my day? So starting my day, I don't look at my phone mm. for the first couple hours of the day. Cause I don't want to I don't want to deal with no drama and I don't just because I have my phone doesn't mean my phone needs to run my world. Mm. So I'm leaving the phone alone for a couple hours. I do a little bit of prayer, a little bit of meditation. I think about my goals spend some time with my wife and anybody could do this. Just, you know, you have to wake up a little earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, but if it's a priority, then it's a priority. Mm. And then at the end of the day, I don't spend my last sleeping minutes on IG or TikTok as much as, you know, we love everybody watching our videos because they're helping, you know what I mean? But, you have to be careful what you're putting in your, what you're putting into your mind at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, so that's just something I do and it helps me stay asleep. It helps me get a good night's sleep and it helps me wake up and start my day with purpose. Yeah. And, um, but you know, that's all the time we have. Thank you for coming. Of course. Sam, next time we're going to talk about these addiction questions, but please, if anybody needs help, if you're ready for treatment, if you're ready for help, Please contact us. If you want to share your story, please send it over. We got links in the in our in our profile. You could DM us. We'll do everything we can to help you out, especially if you're in the United States. We have a lot of options. So please 
continue to contact us and we'll do our best to help you out thank you guys so much for watching thanks sam no worries we'll see you guys next time